All right, coming back. Sorry about that. Part two we got now. Um, anyways, so going back to this idea that um, me, I personally believe that, you know, government does have a role in emergency management. I think coming from the Houston area and being in Texas, we know all about hurricanes, right? Hurricanes are very destructive and flooding. Um, and I think, you know, when you look at it from a libertarian structural perspective, you go, you know, what, what is an individual right? What can the free market do? Um, how can people help or provide for each other? And you realize that the, you know, emergency situation of a flood or a hurricane, it's something that is outside, outside an individual um, in terms of needing help. And we definitely need community help, right? Communities, families, friends, churches, things like that, right? But sometimes that's not enough. Sometimes we need help beyond that. And I think when we look at that from a classical liberal perspective, we say, okay, government's not infringing on anybody's rights. The government is not unnecessarily spending money. It's actually doing it to help the community and helping the community come back up will help stimulate the economy, get people back on their feet, get out of debt, etc. So I look at it from a classical liberal perspective and I think, you know, government does have a hand, does need to be either a partner or a leader. Um, I, you know, as libertarians, we prefer partners, right? A partner in the community to help in those times of need. Um, and I think, like I said, I think about it personally with hurricanes, and that's something beyond an, what an individual can do by themselves. And um, I've seen it firsthand that this is beyond what a libertarian can handle. Now, we can also say that from a libertarian perspective, we do see a lot of government corruption, a lot of um, unnecessary actions that the government is taking, or something even government is taking that is counterproductive to um, getting the community back up. And in that circle, we could definitely be the outspoken critic to say, this is ineffective, or this is overbloated, etc. I think that is perfectly within the realm. But I think to say that the, um, you know, what a government, whether it's local, state, or federal, has no interaction with an emergency situation, such as the one we have right now, I think you would be wrong. And I think as libertarians, I think it's a bit of a disservice, you know, to be in the outside fringe of people um, that are, you know, yelling conspiracy theories. I don't think it helps us as a, as a group, as a political group, you know, the Libertarian Party. And actually, you've seen the mainstream Libertarian Party has not, not been too aggressive on this, right? They're focusing on the election, on their own election. Um, and understanding where our place is in this situation. But I think to jump to conspiracy theories and to jump into, you know, uh, hashtag don't, don't take away my civil liberties, you know, don't make me wear a mask, it's fascist, things like that are just absolutely silly. And most of that's not coming from libertarians. Most of that, let's be honest, is coming from, from the right, right? Right-wing conservative you know, uh, people who were never in support of protests before, <laughs> or lifts or individual rights, right? <laughs> civil liberties, they never believed in civil liberties um, before now until it was their civil liberties that were taken away. So um, maybe we take this moment to um, have a teachable moment, right? That's what they call it, is to have those people on the right who are talking about you know, individual uh, liberties being taken away. Maybe we now have a conversation about criminal justice, you know, um, the criminal justice bias against African American and, and Latinos, or the drug wars, or uh, marriage equality, right? Those are all individual liberties that they have, even now, are still fighting. So now, maybe, we may, now may be a good time to have that conversation. Remember you talked about individual rights, individual liberties? Okay, let's talk about, you know, gay people getting married, or let's talk about the drug war, because those are also individual liberties that we need to um, 
that we need back. So anyways, so I think um, looking at it from that perspective, you know, as a classical liberal, and I do tend to lean that way, uh, left-leaning classical liberal, you know, um, that idea of, you know, um, of, a, of a functioning government um, that allows for maximal freedom, um, that I think is now challenged with this pandemic. And um, I was listening to a great interview on the Cato Institute. Cato's Institute is one of my favorites. They actually tend to lean towards logic and reason a little bit more, just like Reason Magazine is also a great one too. They tend to lean towards that um, and, and ask the hard questions, you know, does the government actually have the authority to do this? And they had a great interview and, and unfortunately, whether you like it or not, the government does have the ability to do what they're doing now. Whether they do it or not is totally up to them. But the governments, the government, whether federal, state, or local, have that capability to put us at a stay at home, you know, work order. Now, the politics of whether they enforce that, who doesn't enforce that, who they enforce it to, that's all very much in the gray area of of politics, right? Because you'll see, you, I mean, it's, it's happening now, you know. You'll see kind of a right-leaning Republican want to open up the things that they have always, you know, put more freedom to versus other people. So, you know, they're opening the churches. They're opening the restaurants, right? Um, they're not opening the bars or the clubs, you know, anything like that. Um, so they're being selective in how they do things. Now, if it was the other way around, you know... Uh, the other the other side, the left-leaning progressives, they would probably flip it, right? They would probably open up every other progressive-focused group and then put hold on the conservatives' groups, right? So I think there's always been a back and forth between the left and the right, you know? Power shifts between left and right, and, you know, when they're in charge, they're going to do things for them and then, you know, put down the other side, and then they're not going to fix things so it's more balanced. They're going to keep the power, the power they have. They're going to enjoy it, and then they're going to fight to give it up. And then when the other side gets it, they're going to do the same thing. So you have to be careful about jumping into those jumping into those arguments of a left versus right. Because the left and the right, I think from what most of us understand is that the left and the right there's no difference right they act they act the same they treat each other the same way they treat their political enemies the same way and um it's not really beneficial for the country and you think about right now right we have a, a moment for all of us to work together left middle right independent libertarian republican democrat doesn't matter we have an ability to step together and say hey we got a problem how can we resolve this you know how can we resolve this in a reasonable scientific manner, right? What's data, what's the data telling us, right? What's the reason here? Um, I don't think we've, we had that, and maybe initially at the beginning, but now it's kind of eroded straight into politics. And some are for good reasons, and some are not so good reasons, right? I think there's plenty of, um, plenty of good reasons in terms of economics, right? We see the unemployment rate is 14% last week and climbing. Uh, but then we also see the infection rate also climbing. And we have to be able to tackle both of these. Otherwise, we're going to be in a very bad shape. So I think the question, I think the answer and the solution is going to be within the realm of libertarianism, right? How can we open the economy safely? How can we give people um, the liberty to move about if they want to without putting them at risk? How do we do all those things? How do we balance this whole thing out? I think, honestly, that's going to be totally within the realm of libertarianism, right? So even though I think we're in a, in a, in a bad position now, I think the solutions are, are good solutions, and I think libertarians have a lot to offer in that, right? You know, libertarians don't have to always bring the answer to no government. Sometimes there's levels. There's levels to this, right? 
So, you know, um, I, you know, I, I, like I've said before, you know, I start, I start my conversations, I start my thinking from a point of logic, right? What's the data? What is, you know, the common, what are the basic concepts? What are the theories, right? And then from there we go, can an individual do this themselves, you know, or can the market do it? Can it, and then you scale up, right? Can, can a community step in, a local community, all right? If not, can the state, can the federal? Um, is there some type of private partnership, uh, private public partnership that, can, that we can do, right? Or is there a way for a government, a government, whether state, local, or federal, to come in and influence um, said subject to, to a positive position? And then finally you go legislation, you know, regulation. That's probably the lowest on the totem pole of my thinking, but it's not necessarily a void, right? It's just at the bottom. I, for me, I think my logic from libertarianism and the reason why I, I stick with the classical liberal approach is because I want that flex to be able to say, okay, you know, this time we don't need government. But maybe there are cer certain circumstances where we are going to need them, whether either as a partner, as a public-private partnership, or as somebody who can influence um, the situation, or somebody who can come in and um, strongly persuade the situation, right? Um, so there is a way to balance those two ideas, you know, balance the non-aggression principle, ban uh, balance limited government. And I always tell people when they say, when they talk about, I thought libertarians don't believe in government. I always say, no, that's a lie, right? We believe in government, right? We, the government has to be there, right? Whether to protect individual rights um, or um, there as a partner to make sure our individual rights are not being infringed upon by other people. There's, there has to be, there has to be um, government, you know? Now, the role and scale and size in which it is involved is totally up to the situation. Um, but it's not void. And I think that's where you do have people that are very anarcho-capitalist. And you go, there's certain circumstances that this just doesn't apply. And, um, and then you start moving in towards the classical liberal position, right? Or even in the limited government there, that there's a minimal role to play. And then you have to discuss what's the minimalist role in that position. But anyways, when I think it comes to emergency management, you know, looking into the details, the devil's always in the details, right? Um, <clears throat> from both a state and federal level, emergencies are managed at the state level, right? And I think specifically in the state of Texas, the emergency manager is the judge, the, the county judge. They're the ones that decide um, the logistics and the scale in which they need to um, act on, um, and then everybody has to comply. Obviously, the emergency managers comply with the governors. Um, and then you obviously have the federal government that makes sure the states are complying with federal laws and that they're not infringing upon you know, constitutional rights, civil liberties, all that stuff. So I think it's a very... Um, balanced scale here about how do we protect the public um, how do we open the economy um, and also how do we not risk more people than we need to and I think it's an answer at every level right you know the federal government is going to have to have an answer whether it's um, some type of assistance or support right the National Guard helping um, some type of funding situation uh, and maybe we leave it at that. Maybe they're not enforcing rules because the size and scale of this, because our country is so large and the situations are so different based on each state and even based on each region, it's so different that maybe not one solution is going to fit all. So maybe the federal government is not the answer to solving the coronavirus crisis. Maybe they can uh, push through uh, more testing. Maybe they can deregulate um, the CDC and the FDA to help um, make testing more efficient or, or make it um, expand it a lot faster. There's ways to do that. 
And then also on the other side, making sure we have the helping hands like the National Guard and the military could totally come here and, and help out. Um, and then there's also funding and assistance um, that we do. But at the same time, we have economics that we have to be careful about. And we know that the more money our government spends, the more bills that rack up, um, the more debt we have to pay, and the more it liquidates the U.S. dollar. So all the money that we're earning right now could be gone. So you have to even find a balance there about, you know, how much is government helping? What's it going to cost us short term and long term? And what impacts do that does that have? I still think we have that as well. And then at the state level, you have probably the most, um, well, maybe about a middleman position, right? Because even in a state, you have such varying positions. You know, you take a city versus rural environment, totally different, night and day. So maybe at that level, you have to, you know, suggest, give guidelines, um, find a way to help each region organize with each other, probably that. And probably the strongest part you have is at the local level, right? Your mayor, your county judge, who is able to look at all that information and make the right decision for your area. I think that's probably the most effective way. And then obviously you hold those elected people accountable for what they do, right? Um, and I think a lot of political leaders have to look at that and go, you know, am I making the right decision? Am I making the wrong decision? It's unfortunately not a good position, right? Because either way, if you just open full bore the economy, people could die more than I think people realize. But at the same time, if you don't open it at all, people are going to lose jobs. The economy is going to melt. You're going to be in a vicious cycle for, for years to come. So how do you find that balance? And as much as I um, don't agree a whole lot with uh, our governor right now in Texas, Governor Greg Abbott, um, I think what he's done is, is pretty reasonable so far, right? Like I said, he's not imposed strict um, rules. He's slowly opening up each portion of the economy to see how things go. Um, and he's giving guidelines, you know, practice social distancing, wear face masks when you go out, um, etc. All those things that we all know that we should be doing. And then, you know, he's leaving it up to the cities and the judges, emergency managers, to manage what that looks like um, and what kind of support they do. Now, I do, I think from a classical liberal perspective, I do kind of wish he allowed local communities to enforce their rules the way they see fit. I think the city of Houston, you know, specifically, is in a <clears throat> in a much more high-risk situation than, you know, a rural county. Um, and so I think those areas need flexibility to enforce or not enforce their own rules, right? Like city ordinances, um, you know, um, you know, they need to be able to manage those situations um, as they see fit. And obviously, whether it's state, local, or federal, um, they all need to abide by the Constitution. So, um, you know, you, you take it that, you look at that from a libertarian perspective, do you still have the ability to, um, to be, you know, to believe what you want to believe, to have the freedom of speech? Yes, you do. Do you have the right to bear arms? Yes, you do. Do you have the right um, to a speedy trial? Do you have the right to search, you know, that the government uh, needs a warrant for search and seizure? Yes, you do. So all those things from a constitutional perspective are still, still being upheld. Um, and I think we need to find a balance there. So the answer, I don't really have a solid answer, you know, for this. What I, I think really what I've learned is that everybody's gonna have a different answer based on where they are and based on their situation. And we need to have some flexibility for, for all and still be able to find a way to balance our health and safety. So if you're out there, you know, um, do your research on your own, not just, you know, editorial websites. Um, you know, I don't want to pick on anybody, but I think, I think the right, the right leaning websites like the blaze and all these other stuff, they're very non 
logic, non-data-driven, non-science-based. They're just editorials. And I think people mistake that for facts versus opinions. Um, and so a lot of things about wearing face masks, hand sanitizers, um, you know, how the infection is happening, etc. I think all of that is being very uh, muddied on the right. And I think um, they're not really um, adding or helping into the conversation. I think most of the science and medical experts are saying wear a face mask when you go out either to not get someone else sick in case you have it or to not get it into your face right um, practice social distancing wash your hands hand sanitizer all those things um, make sure that at least at the very, very bare minimum that you as an individual are practicing those on your own um, whether your community is doing it or whether they're they're not I think you ultimately are up or um, responsible for your own life right that is ultimately libertarian be responsible for your own life and if you don't believe in these things and you're going out then you have to face the consequences right if you get coronavirus or somebody you get someone else sick you're going to be responsible for that and you have to face up right so anyways just wanted to send out a message today um got cut up got cut in the middle of it with a uh, phone call i'm using my ipad and my iphone and forgot to put it on airplane mode lesson learned but anyways put it want to shoot a message out there just say hey what's going on um i'm doing both an audio and video podcast putting it on youtube and uh, podbean so if you could subscribe i'd really appreciate it comment like um all those things i would greatly appreciate it Libertarianism is something I talk about quite a bit. It's something I believe in. Um, and like I said, I've been slowly drifting myself back into classical liberalism. But I think from there, it's still about individuals um, giving people the ability to run their own lives. And if they need help, give them some help. But anyways, um, y'all be safe out there. Um, Memorial Day weekend is right now. It's coming up. So um, enjoy yourselves. Stay safe. And um, hug your family and friends for me. All right. Bye.